welcome friends to this monthly meeting now being carried by live stream which you can watch right now and also later on there will be an edited version on youtube i am speaking from chicago but behind me you can see some pictures i don't know how much you can see but these are pictures from bruce wisconsin where our headquarters is being built in the form of a dome which we expect should be ready sometime in the near future i am again happy to get lots of information from people about their health that they are in good shape in, in spite of this coronavirus in spite of covid-19 existing in so many countries i am getting global emails from all over that they are all doing well i am happy that great master protection is being available to all of us i have been praying to great master to help each one of us in this critical time in our health condition because of coronavirus also the number of emails and text messages that i used to get in hundreds have gone into thousands and therefore it takes me a lot of time merely to read them so i'm sorry if many of you are still waiting for replies and i'm trying to reply as many as i can but because of the large number if you haven't received my reply please be sure the reply is being sent to you telepathically during guru purnima i received several thousands emails wishing me uh, happiness for the guru purnima i agree guru purnima is a great day to remember our gurus and i heartily thank all of you for sending those messages i am sorry i will not be able to respond to each one of you personally as i was able to do in the previous years this number was very large this year but i am taking this opportunity to thank you for sending me those greetings i am also happy that you have been meditating and uh, taking advantage of the lockdowns that has been occurring in several countries lockdown in the home can give opportunity for spending time with the family spending more time with what you want to do personally it gave you time to be free from your daily work and of course meditation was one of the option which many of you have utilized i am very happy to hear that from your emails meditation is a must if you want to know who we are and what's the nature of this creation somebody said to me a small quotation i think from rumi which many mystics have also used earlier which describe our totality as an ocean and we as drops of that ocean and we have been told that we as drops have lost our awareness of that ocean and therefore we are suffering in our individuation here it's nice to think that uh, ocean or a body of water is being described as our totality water appears to be very important water appears to be a principal ingredient on the surface of this planet and a principal ingredient in our bodies so i think it is a good example of how the water is being used to describe our spiritual destination i have often mentioned that when i was young and i was told that we are drops of ocean of our true home and we are separated for a long time and now the spiritual journey requires that we have to travel back after laborious process of meditations and strict dietary regulations and other formalities that are prescribed for meditation in order to reach that ocean and get merged in it i have always seen that as a very futile exercise as drops we have an individuality as drops of water we shine in the sun we have a personality are we going to lose all that to make a long journey to a true home and get merged in an ocean where the ocean doesn't care if one more drop is added to it this concept that our spiritual journey is made up of a drop of ocean 
going back to its uh, source, the ocean, is going to get anything benefit, doesn't appeal to me at all. That is why I rejected this concept right from the beginning. But the real concept came up later when somebody quoted Rumi saying, we are not a drop of the ocean, a drop in the ocean, we are the ocean in the drop. And that looks like a big contradiction at physical level. You can't put the whole ocean in a drop. What does it really mean? If we can understand what it means that we are not a drop of the ocean, but the ocean in a drop. If we understand its full meaning, we'll be able to understand the spiritual part. This is the real secret. How can a drop contain the whole ocean? Let's imagine that a drop has a power of imagination. If the drop imagines it is surrounded by the same material it has, mainly water, all around it, although it's an imaginative exercise, the drop can create around itself an imaginary ocean as big as it likes, right up to infinity. Now you might say that is barely imaginary an imaginary ocean around a drop. But in that case, even in imagination, the drop has become the ocean itself because the whole imagination is taking place in the drop and the ocean is merely an extension of the drop and therefore we can say the whole ocean is in the drop. This will really explain the very nature of creation. We don't look at it like this. We think the creation of these universes that we see outside are all really outside. None of them are outside. All levels of creation, the physical, the astral, the causal, the spiritual, the total, they're all inside us, inside the drop, inside our own totality, of which we are really a true representation even as a human being. As human beings and seekers, we are the drops that it contain the entire ocean because the ocean is being created as an illusion from within that drop. Nothing outside is actually materially or otherwise real. But we have created reality by use of something little better than imagination. I gave the example that if the drop had imagination, he could create an ocean around itself. But supposing that imagination was more than imagination, it was what I term true consciousness. And consciousness can generate a conscious experience of anything. Therefore, don't consider it as an imaginary function, but a function of consciousness. That means consciousness can be conscious of anything around itself and that becomes creation. If we can understand that, we'll understand the whole the, the part of the master, the whole santmat is really an expression that our own totality is within ourselves and what we experience outside of ourselves is merely an extension of our own consciousness. The consciousness has a great power. The consciousness has the highest creative power. Well, how does it work? Consciousness the power to become conscious of anything it wants. When it becomes conscious, that becomes creation. All levels of experiences that we have are generated from consciousness. That is why we say this physical world is not really outside of us. It is inside, being projected outside and being experienced outside. To do that, we have got very nice tools built into ourselves. The physical body is a very good tool in the physical body. We are separated from the experience outside. The experience outside is as physical with the same material our body is built. So we can easily take this as a reality that we are separated and therefore the creation is separate from us. And therefore we are merely a small part of creation. Also the experience that we are having of time and space, which means we are very small bit in the large vast space around us. And we have been here for a very short time in this body, compared to the time the whole cosmos around us has existed. Therefore, it looks that the outside cosmos must be more real than ourselves. 
this tool is very good to use a physical body to generate an experience of a real outside world. But if we understand how time and space are created, we would understand this itself is the function of another part of ourselves. Inside the body lies our mind and the mind generates the concept of space and time. Imagine that we go to sleep at night and we have a dream. In the dream we see a beautiful sky full of stars and a vast space above us. And we remember the stars were there for millions of years. All that experience we are having in the dream of the creation of space and time, the creation of stars, is all taking place within us, but we do not realize it. Looks like an outside space, outside time, and an infinite space, infinite time. When we wake up, the dream ends. We were the creators of the dream from the time we slept and started the dream and the creation ended when we woke up. It's the same process right here and same process at every level of creation. That the creation comes up from consciousness within and we have been given the tools so that we can make a reality outside of ourselves to enjoy and experience. All creation that we are examining now outside is totally controlled by what we can perceive with our sense perception. There is no other way to experience any reality outside except through our sense perception. We can use telescopes, we can use microscopes, we can use several gadgets, but they are all being observed and created from the observer and therefore they exist only because of the observer through the five senses of perception. It's amazing how perception can be used to create an experience which looks real, but being used very effectively right now. These five senses that we use, we think are part of our human body and part of the brain, part of the nervous system. Is it really so? We can only find out if the body were dead and would these sense perceptions still work. When we die, whether they work or not, we have no information. Very few people can say that we were dead and we came back. I hear stories of near-death experiences, NDR, near-death NDE, near-death experiences. When people talk of their near-death experience, they tell us what they saw, what they heard. The same sense perceptions are working in near-death experiences and then they come back to the body. Some of these experiences even show that they can see the body which is dead and then come back to it. Not only they can see the body, in the material world, the surgeons and doctors and physicians taking care of the body can be seen performing those things and what they are talking when the person is dead, comes back alive and can repeat what the doctors were talking. Therefore, there is so much evidence of this NDE, near-death experience, which shows that there is something in us which allows the sense perceptions to function even if the body is dead. Now, this is not the only way that we can find out if sense perceptions will work when the body is dead. We can do what mystics have advised, die while living. Dying while living means that we can have the same experience which death will create, but while we are still living in the same body. That's a far better method of determining if sense perceptions really work even after the body is dead. Now dying while living is merely an experience of withdrawing our awareness of the physical body while we are still in the body. Because in death we lose awareness of the body, the body is cremated or buried. But are we still there? If we can lose complete awareness of our body, Maybe we can get a hint of what sense perceptions are. Those who have done it, and by simple methods of meditation, as I explain often, by withdrawing your attention to yourself, not to the body, but to yourself, wherever the self happens to be. If you try to understand where is the self when you meditate, you find you close your eyes, 
just is looking outside but these eyes are closed imaginary figures come in front of you some eyes are working to see the imaginary figures you can hear sounds some ears are working but not the physical ears so you know that some sense perceptions are working if you imagine yourself in the darkness created by shutting your eyes and trying to figure out where are you operating from in the physical body in your imaginary body happens to be right behind the eyes somewhere in the head it may be looking in the beginning like it's covering the whole physical body but if you begin to put attention on it attention on what you are doing with the inner sense perceptions you will discover that the sense perceptions you have inside are independent of the percept sense perceptions we thought were on the body that's a much better proof but a better proof than that would be if you can hold your attention to that imaginary inside body for a longer time if you can do it every day and hold longer and longer time in that imaginary self you discover that the mind which we have been using in the physical body to remember things is still working we still have memories we have memories of what we saw in the physical body but when we spend more time in a body in which we have no awareness of the physical body memories start coming of the sense perceptions the imaginary body which do not even relate to the physical life here we can remember something which happened before we were born that shows that the inner self which we call an imaginary body has a memory of existence even prior to the birth of this body therefore that self must have a longer life if you go into deeper meditation by longer stays in that state you can discover that you have been here for thousands of years in that state and that the physical body has changed several times during that period when you had one inner so called imaginary body which we now call astral self the astral self if you examine very carefully what does it have as compared to the physical body the physical body has matter has physical matter molecules atoms is built up of what we call physical matter the astral body has no physical matter but this physical body we are operating in we are using the mind for thinking we are alive in this body do we still have a mind for thinking and are alive in the inner body in the astral self yes if you have time to spend in the astral self you discover that we have the same mind and the same life that we have in the physical body so all we have done through this process of meditation of the drawing attention from the body physical body into our inner self all we have done is merely to remove one layer of experience from ourselves the layer of physicality the layer of material body outside you will be surprised that if you understand the nature of the astral self it is nothing more but sense perceptions using the same mind and the same life the life is coming not from the mind the life is coming from what we call our soul life or soul are different from the mind the mind thinks the mind creates time and space and performs all its functions in that space and time it creates namely thinking reasoning using logic understanding and using it for communications writing communicating with the people working independently in itself working with sense perceptions and working through the physical body so the mind is working in space and time and does not perform any function whatsoever outside of it whereas our soul or life can perform functions which do not need any duration at all for example the experience of intuition or sudden knowing of something without thinking is outside of time it comes so suddenly it does not take even a nanosecond to appear in us by trying to understand it we take time we start using our mind to get some information and knowledge which comes intuitively if you examine carefully you will see all intuitive knowledge comes from the
the soul, not from the mind. The soul functions beyond time and space. And the mind functions only in time and space. The distinction is very clear. But several people think the mind and soul are the same. They are not. And you can test it yourself. That the mind can never function. The thinking process always takes time. So that is why the distinction is simple. Now when we go back to the soul, and let's say the soul is made up of consciousness. A good assumption to make, because if it is made of consciousness, then the whole idea of a drop containing the ocean becomes relevant. If the soul is consciousness, and the consciousness being conscious of the mind, being conscious of the senses, being conscious of the physical body, being conscious of what is created around ourselves, means that the entire creation of everything, including the mind and the senses in the body, is part of consciousness and generated from there. Therefore, consciousness is a drop, and the ocean has been created around it, but it's still part of the drop. And we can say the ocean is part of the drop, and what Rumi and other mystics have said is true. By understanding this, our whole understanding of the physical world disappears. It's not a reality existing by itself. It would not exist if we did not exist. It's a very big statement to make. But through meditation and going to these levels of experiences, you can prove it to yourself. The teachings I am sharing with you are not based upon any theory or any philosophy. They are based on experience. They are open to anybody. No matter what religion you have, no matter what nationality you have, no matter whether you are a believer in something or not, no matter you are an atheist or you are a religious person, to discover the nature of your own self has nothing to do with religion. Religion has created somebody to worship. Most religions have created a god, and Ishwar, Parmeshwar, Allah, Zeus, they call called somebody personified so we can worship. And they have put the person or the being that they create God that they call God or the Creator as somebody separate from us. Somewhere in heaven. Many people look up like this when they are trying to uh, say prayer to a creator of ours. Therefore, this assumption that the creative power is outside of ourselves is totally incongruent and inconsistent with our own understanding that the whole creation takes place from within. And yet, the mystics on whose teachings we set up these religions, they all said that the truth of our existence lies inside us. They even said that the kingdom of God is within us, that this human body is a temple of a living God, that the one we worship outside is only a concept of human minds. Therefore, the true God, the true creation, is nothing more than our own consciousness. Do we have many levels of consciousness? Or is it just a one-time thing that the consciousness created mind, space, time, sense perception, and body? If we do deeper meditation, we can answer that question also. We can find that each level of experience has been separated from the other level. For good reason. Because we can create a greater reality if we keep the source separated from the result and with several intervening stages because then each stage looks like a different type of reality. So the truth is that physical reality is not the only reality. We have several levels of realities. The astral reality is different from the physical reality. Just like a dream reality while we are dreaming is different from the wakeful reality. The astral reality consists of our having an experience of sense perceptions without a material existence. Therefore, our body becomes very light. It has all sense perceptions, but no heavy matter that keeps this body materially heavy. That is why it is easy to fly in the astral body than in the physical body. Because we can fly and at speeds which are different from the speed at which we can do things here, it gives us a vast opportunity to examine what has been created at the astral level. At the physical level, we find that the more we look outside into space, 
for so many galaxies, black holes, new creation taking place. It's a very vast creation of the physical plane. But can you imagine if you were to go and use your astral self, you would find a much vaster universe existing. And not only a much vaster universe existing, but one that you can actually fly into and examine. It's very difficult for us in the physical plane to even go to the nearest star around us. It takes so much time for light to come from there, so much time for any means of transportation we have available to go anywhere in space and time. But in the astral plane, it becomes easy. So a wide range of interesting experiments are possible when we are in the astral plane. I, I am sure many of you have had this experience also because going to the astral plane is the easiest part of meditation. You simply have to close your eyes. Imagine where you are inside the body. Just a little contemplation will tell you that you are closing your eyes but looking from the eyes inside at the darkness in front and that is your inner self. And you can find that the inner self you can not only see imaginary things, you can talk without opening your mouth. You can feel with your hands inside without moving your hands outside. You can do everything and you can fly. And you can fly at high speed. So therefore, the inner self can be experienced very easily by concentrating our attention on that imaginative self simply by closing our eyes and being still in the physical body. But the next stage is more difficult and very few people have done it. But I encourage some of you who have the time to do deeper meditation to try it out. That is achieved by using the same method of withdrawal of attention to the inner self. But this time you start with the inner self. Close the eyes of the inner self in which you are seeing imaginary things. And imagine where are you in the inner self. You will find that when you do that, you lose your form. You cannot imagine a form of the same type as a body, which you could have done in the astral self. The astral self looks like the physical self. But when you meditate inside the head of the imaginary self, you discover you lose your form, but the self is very intact. The thinking is very strong. The concepts that you have been examining become a reality. And it's a very different experience. If you spend time in that state, you will discover that you can understand the nature of space and time. You can understand how that is generated purely from the conscious mind. Not even consciousness per se, but from the mind you can create the space and time. All experiences that have happened at the astral plane and the physical plane have taken place because of what has happened in the causal plane. It's a very great experience. I'm sure some of you can definitely see it. There are some features that you will notice in these space and time that are generated at different levels. As you know, in the dream state, which is considered to be even lower than the physical wakeful state, the time frames are very different than in the wakeful state. For example, in the dream state, you can have a long experience. I remember during sleep and dream studies, one person had a dream that he was a small child going to school. He grew up, fell in love with a girl, later on got married and grew bigger and taller and uh, older, had several children, then he had grandchildren, then he died and he woke up. He had his whole life in one dream and the actual time the dream took was 11 minutes timed by the authorities who are examining the dream. So we can convert 11 minutes of wakeful time into a whole lifetime in a dream. In the same way, the time frame in the astral plane is very different from the time frame here. And we can stretch the time considerably more over here than what is available there. On the other hand, the astral time is also very different from the causal time because the causal time is generating the space-time and therefore one moment of the causal plane can be whole several lifetimes in the astral plane. So the causal plane is very different uh, because you have reached a level 
where neither the self perceptions are working nor is your body working physical body working your mind is still working mind is still active the mind is still thinking the same kind that we are thinking now the same mind is thinking that thinking right in the physical body or in the astral self the mind has not changed the memories are still the same but just like in the astral self through sense perceptions we were able to remember things that happened before the body was born and the causal plane you can remember things that could be million years old and you would discover that you were the same mind with the same life for a million years it's a very big experience to understand the nature of time and space to understand who we are but many people think that is the end of the journey because meditation can only take us to that level the reason is simple meditation is done with a will to meditate with a decision to meditate with a mental thought to meditate so we are functioning under the will of the mind and therefore when we reach the actual experience of the mind per se without the sense perception and the body we have reached the destination that the mind or any function of the mind can take us and since meditation is a function of the mind that is where we end up and lot of people lot of saints even mystics i've seen in their in their teachings a teaching how the universal mind the ultimate mind which creates the individuated mind is the source of all creation and to some extent they are right because all creation that we can experience in all three levels different levels of creation are all being generated from the mind so they can say that the type of creation we can experience in time and space is all generated from the causal plane therefore that is the highest plane but perfect living masters tell us otherwise they say even mind is a creation it's a creation of life of the life force of consciousness of the very thing that makes it possible to have any experience whatsoever therefore they say we can go beyond the mind but meditation cannot take us there a meditation created by the will of the mind cannot go beyond the mind so therefore something else has to take us beyond the mind and that is something that comes from the soul not from the mind now when we look at the soul we want to see what functions the soul is performing at all times whether we have a physical body or an astral self or a causal self what function is the soul performing and we discover that there are a few functions which we can clearly identify which we experience in life which are not based upon time and space and they occur suddenly and spontaneously and they are not connected with thinking those functions are one falling in love with someone you fall in love is spontaneous is instantaneous and is not created by thought second function intuition intuitive knowledge comes suddenly spontaneously without any thinking thirdly appreciation of beauty when we appreciate beauty it's sudden we can analyze it with the mind later but the actual experience of appreciation of beauty actually appreciation of anything is sudden so appreciation itself is a function of the soul so we have several functions like these which are not connected with time and space and these are being performed by the soul the individuated state of consciousness all the time so if we want to find where is our soul one of these methods of the soul are applied the most useful method is the method of love that is why some people say god is love the creative power is love they give big importance to love so how does love function to take us beyond the mind it has to be a love coming from beyond the mind to draw us there love pulls us even in the three levels of creation love pulls us when we are in love we want to be close to where the love is coming from 
the beloved is drawn to the lover, the lover is drawn to the beloved. This attraction, this pull that comes from the also comes from beyond the mind. It comes only if we have something pulling us from beyond the mind. Now what is that which is beyond the mind? All we know is our soul. Can the soul pull our attention, pull our sense more than the attention of the mind into itself? It possibly can. But we do not know what our soul is. Is there a method for doing it? No method, because all methods are mental. All methods we design are made by the mind. So without a method, how does the soul pull ourselves back to itself? So the secret is given to us by these perfect living masters who operate from beyond the mind. They tell us that when we were souls before creation, and we decided to have these experiences of different coverings upon ourselves as tools for experience, we designed the method of the soul pulling us up before even creation started. And the method was that as all creation in the lower planes is an extension of consciousness, we will place in consciousness an experience generated at the physical level which would look like we are now meeting somebody outside, of course being created by the consciousness of the seeker, who looks like an individual like ourselves, but apparently represents our soul. And we call that human being a perfect living master. Very few people will appreciate that the perfect living master is an extension of our own self and has just appeared in our life so that from the appearance we can do something in life that enables the soul to pull itself. The method is simple. The extension of the soul as a perfect living master gives us an experience of love for that master and love of the master for us. It gives us a pull towards that master. It's a human being. It is a, we think it's a separate human being an individual separated from us because we have no knowledge that it's our own arrangement that we had to show our soul outside of ourselves to experience one of the soul's functions of love. But the experience does take place and we are pulled by the love sometimes without explanation, sometimes against the mind, the reasoning. And we know that this is something different. But what do these perfect living masters tell us? If they are part of the rest of the creation being run by a law we call the law of cause and effect, the law of karma, then the perfect living master will say, come to us and we'll show you something outside. But perfect living masters who are representing our own self do not say that. They say, go within yourself. When they insist on our going within ourselves and we go within, what do we find? Because of our memories, or what we have seen outside, because of our imagination, we begin to see the same masters inside. We remember them and suddenly they become alive inside and we think that we are imagining things. But when they start saying things we are not imagining, we realize they are more real inside than they were outside. Very big change in our perspective. When we begin to talk to that inside in the astral plane, what do they say there? They don't say, let's fly and enjoy this life. They say, if you want to enjoy, you can, like you enjoyed the physical world, physical experience, go within yourself. And when we do that and are able to practice the deeper type of meditation with the inner self and we reach the causal plane, where, what do we find? We find our formless form and the formless form of the same master who we saw in the astral plane, who we saw in the physical plane. It's amazing that they are leading us to our own self. And therefore, when we are in the causal plane, we feel a pull within ourselves, not with meditation, but with the experience of love. That experience of love is coming from our soul. We only discover that the master and our soul were the same when the love pulls us beyond the mind without effort without doing anything except the experience of love. How come 
Some people are able to get that and some are not. It all depends on what arrangements we made before coming here. Now, did each soul make its own arrangement? When you discover the soul, we have reached spiritual regions. The spirit is the soul. But is it only one soul or separate soul? Is there not a multitude of souls making these arrangements? Then we go one step higher. That is very rare. The spiritual masters who have taken us to the soul have been called perfect living masters because they have taken us to perfection. All imperfection is created by the mind. And they have taken us beyond the mind, so they are perfect living masters. But there is a grade of masters, even amongst perfect living masters, who say even the individuation, individuality of a soul is created from a higher level. It's not individual souls. The individual drops that we see are part of totality at all times. As I said again and again, I sometimes show you a cup of water and I take a chance, of course, as having a sip at it. The water is full of drops. How many drops? Size of the drop I can determine. Maybe a million drops, maybe a hundred drops. The size will change. The more I change the size, the number of drops increases. But the glass of water remains the same. Our true self, our true self is like that bulk water in which we are drops. That means we are not separated from that. Then what is the spiritual journey we are talking of if we are still part of the totality of that water, that conscious self? the individual souls are all part of one soul, then what are we talking of when we say that we have separate souls? It's only a question of where our awareness is. Awareness comes from consciousness. Awareness is the main function of consciousness. To be aware of things is the main function of consciousness. Consciousness has other functions like potential awareness, hidden awareness. It has many functions. But the main function is available awareness. All we have done is to contract, contract our awareness to the level of a drop, but remaining in the ocean. So the ocean and the drop are identical, except of the level of awareness. If you understand that concept, that the ocean and the drop are the same, the ocean is merely part of the awareness of the totality. You discover the nature of an individual soul in relation to the ultimate creative power, totality of consciousness. That is why totality of consciousness is our reality. Can we experience it? Yes, we can. If the perfect living masters appear in our life, in physical life as a human being, and are aware of that conscious totality of consciousness, their love pulls us right to the totality of consciousness. Therefore, even amongst perfect living masters, there are masters operating from totality of consciousness. What the difference between the two was the planning to come and have an experience in different levels of creation and then go back to a true home and create the time necessary for do doing that, done at the soul level or totality? Now, if you understand the nature of totality, you will find it was all done at the level of totality. Why do I call it totality? Why do I call it total? I do this, I use the special word total, totality of consciousness, simply because there, there is nothing outside of it. When we realize that the contraction of the whole ocean into a drop took place there, creating millions of drops there, it only means that it contracted in that same totality of consciousness, nothing left consciousness, nothing left totality. Therefore, all experiences, they are merely experiences of different levels of awareness. Even the soul was one level of awareness, individuation created within totality. The other adding on the mind, adding on sense perceptions, adding on the physical bodies, were all happening within totality. Nothing ever happened outside of it. And that totality, the real self, right now, 
operating from within our own physical bodies and can be accessed through these means, through a perfect living master, right within our own body and our own self. How fortunate we are in this form, so remote from the totality of awareness, totality of consciousness, to be able to do so, to be able to have all these experiences I am describing. All the experiences I am describing are possible with the human life. They are not possible in other lives because we do not have that experience of seeking this our own self in any other form except in the human form. Therefore, I congratulate all of you that you are all ready as human beings to have the experience. Your step is very simple. Seek who you are. Seek within yourself who you are. And the arrangement, if you already made, a perfect living master will appear in your life. My experience shows every seeker who seeks within himself or herself has found a master. A master comes to life. Not necessarily always a perfect living master, but a master who will take you to some stage inside. So levels of masters are also numerous. They take you to different stages for which you are ready, for which you are be able to seek and understand the seeking. But when you seek your totality, a perfect living master from totality appears in your life. I'm so happy to share these insights with you and these teachings with you, which all come from my great master, Hazur Maharaj Baba Sawan Singh. He was a perfect living master. He proved himself to the hilt. Nothing I'm sharing with you is based upon any philosophies or teaching from books or other discourses, they are based upon the teachings which can be practiced and which can be obtained by anyone. So that is why Red Master always said, do not believe or disbelieve anything based upon somebody else's experience. Experience yourself and believe what you have experienced. If your experience is limited, believe that much. But do not disbelieve something because you have not experienced it. Do not say, I haven't seen it, therefore it doesn't exist. Others may have seen it. You can also see it. Follow the simple method of meditation by withdrawing your attention to your own self within. Wherever you discover yourself, wherever you feel you are seeking from, go within deeper and deeper into yourself and you discover that you were ready for your true journey to your totality because you prearranged it before you ever came here. Thank you very much. All the blessings to you. I'm very happy to see you on this monthly meeting and I'll be seeing you again next month. I am hoping that if the lockdowns end, we may be able to have a meditation workshop in September. If it is possible that we can have a live session not live streaming, I'd be very happy to make an announcement. Uh, Jonathan, the president of the Institute for Study of Human Awareness, Isha, will keep you informed of these developments. Thank you once again for your patient listening to me.